mantras of our divine mother our divine mother says in failure as well as in success the divine grace is always there with my love and blessings says our divine mother of our divine mother from the collective works of our divine mother question and answers volume 8 page 195 date 20th june 1956 the child says sweet mother it is said follow your soul and not your mind which leaps at appearances how to practice this in everyday life for this our divine mother says why what is the problem what is the difficulty for this the child says sweet mother how to put this advice into practice this recommendation to follow one's soul and not one's mind for this our divine mother says this is a purely individual matter the first condition is to receive inspirations from the soul exactly what we are just speaking about for if one does not receive them how can one follow one's soul the first condition is to be a little conscious of one's soul and receive its inspirations the first condition is to be a little conscious of one's own soul and receive its inspirations then naturally it goes without saying that one must obey them instead of obeying the reasoning intellect but how to do that by what method this is something purely personal each one must find his own method the principle is there if one wants to apply it for each one the method is different it all depends on the extent to which one is conscious of the inspirations from the soul it depends on the extent to which one is conscious of the inspirations from the soul on the degree of identity one has with it so one can't give the same remedy for everybody then the child says sweet mother the more you give the more you receive it is said does this apply to the physical energy should one undertake physical work which seems beyond one's capacity and what should be one's attitude while doing this kind of work for this our divine mother says if one did not spend one would never receive The great force a child has for growth for the development is that he spends without stint naturally when one spends one must recuperate and one must have the time that is needed to recuperate but what a child cannot do one day he can do the next so if you never go beyond the limit you have reached you will never progress question sweet mother what should be done to remember the mother constantly should one repeat her name remember her physical form or think or feel that she is the divine is gratitude for the divine a form of remembrance for this a divine mother says all this is good and many other things are good too it depends on what each one can do It is a little too personal a question. It depends on each one. It is the same thing. If one generalizes it, it makes no sense any longer. To remember, you must not forget. That's all. To live
Next date, 8th August 1956, page 252. Question, sweet mother. Sri Aurobindo writes, A psychic fire within must be lit into which all is thrown with the divine name upon it. In the book Synthesis of Yoga, in the book Synthesis of Yoga, page 155, Question, sweet mother, isn't the psychic fire always lit? For this, our Divine Mother says, no, it is not always lit. Question, then how to light it up? Our Divine Mother says, by aspiration, by the will for progress, by the urge towards perfection. Above all, it is the will for progress and self-purification which lights the fire. The will for progress, those who have a constant strong will, when they turn towards the spiritual progress and purification, automatically find the light within themselves. And each defect one wants to cure, each progress one wants to make, if all that is done is thrown into that fire, it burns with a new intensity. And this is not an image, it is a fact in the subtle physical. One can feel the warmth of the flame, one can see in the subtle physical the light of the flame. And when there is something in the nature which prevents you from advancing and one throws it into that fire, it begins to burn and flame and becomes more intense. Question, sweet mother, how can one feel sweetness and joy when one is in difficulty? For this our Divine Mother says exactly when the difficulty is egoistic or personal. If one makes an offering of it and throws it into the fire of purification, one immediately feels the joy of progress. If one does it sincerely, at once there is a welling up of joy. This is obviously what ought to be done instead of despairing and lamenting. If one offers it up and aspires sincerely for transformation and purification, one immediately feels joy springing up in the depths of the heart. Even when the difficulty is a great sorrow, one may do this with much success. One realizes that behind the sorrow, no matter how intense it may be, there is a divine joy, says our Divine Mother. Volume 8, Question and Answers, date 4th July 1956, page 211 Question Sweet Mother, it is said if someone sees a shooting star and at that moment one aspires for something, that aspiration is fulfilled within the ear. Is it true? For this our Divine Mother says, do you know what that means? The aspiration must be formulated during the time the star is visible. And that doesn't last long, does it? Well, if an aspiration can be formulated while the star is visible, this means that it is all the time there, 
present in the forefront of the consciousness. This does not apply to ordinary things. It has nothing to do with that at all. It concerns a spiritual aspiration. But the point is that if you are able to articulate your spiritual aspiration just at that moment, it means that it is right in front of your consciousness that it dominates your consciousness. And necessarily, whatever dominates your consciousness can be realized very swiftly. Our Divine Mother says, I had the opportunity to make this experiment. Exactly this. The moment the star was seen, the moment the star was seen, at that very moment they sprang up from the consciousness to realize the divine union for my body. To realize the divine union for my body. That very moment. And before the end of the year, it was done. But it was not because of the star. It was because that dominated my whole consciousness. And I was thinking of nothing else but that. I wanted only that. Thought only of that. Acted only for that. So this thing which generally takes a whole lifetime, it is said the minimum time is 35 years. Before 12 months had it was done. But that was because I thought only of that. And it is because I was thinking only of that, that just when the star flashed, I could formulate it. Not merely a vague impression, formulate it in precise words like this, to realize union with the divine, the inner divine, the thing we speak of, the very thing we speak of. Therefore, what is important is not the star, but the aspiration. The star is only like an outer demonstration, nothing else. But it is not necessary to have a shooting star in order to realize swiftly. What is necessary is that the whole will of the being should be concentrated on one point. Next, date 18th July 1956, page 222. Question, sweet mother. I would like an explanation, sweet mother. In prayers and meditations, there is a sentence, and the hours fading away like unlived dreams, dated 19th Jan 1917. For this, our Divine Mother says, this is an experience. Do you know what an unlived dream is? I did not take the word dream in the sense of dreams at night. I took the word dream to mean something one has built up in the best and most clear-sighted part of one's being, something which is an ideal, would like to be realized, something higher, more beautiful, more noble, more wonderful than all that has been created. And one has a power of imagination or creation somewhere in one's consciousness and one builds something so that it may be realized. And then for some reason or other it may not be realized. Either the world was not ready or perhaps the formation was not sufficient but it is not realized. And so the hours pass sterile, unproductive, useless, vain, empty. They seem to fade away because they have no result, no usefulness. And so I said, and the hours pass fading away like unlived dreams. I have received two questions. One is about a sage from the synthesis of yoga, where it is said, For there is conceived behind the individual love, obscured by the ignorant human figure, a mystery which the mind cannot seize, the mystery of the body of the divine, the secret of a mystic form of the infinite, which we can approach only through the ecstasy of the heart, the passion of the pure and sublimated sense, and its attraction, which is the call of the divine flute player, the mastering compulsion of the all-beautiful, can only be seized and seize us 
through an occult love and yearning which is in the end makes the form and the formless identify spirit and matter it is that which the spirit and love is seeking here in the darkness of ignorance it is that which finds when individual human love is changed into the love of the immanent divine incarnate in the material universe this is taken from the synthesis of yoga page 150 for this our divine mother says this brings us back to the symbol of krishna and radha krishna says our divine mother krishna is the one of whom shri aurobindo speaks here as the divine flute player that is to say the immanent and universal divine who is the supreme power of attraction the soul the psychic personality called here as radha who responds to the call of the flute player so i have been asked to say something this evening on the radha consciousness that is in fact on the way in which the individual soul answers to the call of the divine it so happens that this is exactly what shri aurobindo has described in the chapter we have just read it is that capacity of finding ananda in all things through identification with the one divine presence and the complete self giving to that presence so i don't think i have much to add what i could say would be a limitation or diminution of the totality of this experience after a little silence our divine mother says this consciousness has the capacity of changing everything into a perpetual ecstasy for instead of seeing things in their discordant appearance one sees only the divine presence the divine will and the grace everywhere and every event every element every circumstance every form changes into a way a detail through which one can draw more intimately and profoundly closer to the divine discordances disappear ugliness vanishes there is only now the splendor of the divine presence in a love shining in all things a divine mother says it is obvious that from a particular point of view one must be able to remain at a constant and unshakable height in order to be in the state without exposing oneself to fairly troublesome consequences that is probably why those who wish to live in this state used to withdraw from the world and find the universal contact through nature and divine mother says i must say without meaning to be unpleasant to men that it is the infinitely easier thing to realize this state of consciousness when one is surrounded by trees flowers plants and even animals than by human beings it is easier it is easier but not indispensable and if one wants the state to be truly integral one must be able to keep it at every moment in the presence of anyone and anything these are countless legends or stories of this kind like that of prahlad for instance which we saw recently that illustrates the state of consciousness i must add a word which is quite important you must not seek this state of consciousness with any motive or seek because it is protection or a help you must have it sincerely spontaneously constantly it must be a normal natural effortless way of being then it is effective but if you try in the least to initiate the moment with the idea of burning a particular result it won't succeed the result is not obtained at all and then in your ignorance you will perhaps say oh they told me that but it is not true that is because there was some insincerity somewhere otherwise if you are sincere 
that is if you if there is an integral and spontaneous experience it is all powerful if looking into somebody's eyes you can spontaneously see the divine presence there the worst moments vanish the worst obstacles disappear the flame of an infinite joy awakes sometimes in the other persons as well in oneself to live 